I thought I'd just take a couple minutes trying to explain a little bit about who we are. Uh, if you think about 20 years ago when the company was founded, what were we thinking? Why did we embark in this, this uh, interesting quest? Well, I had three memories that I, I, I dug up. The first was that cool is awesome, but not enough. I had the opportunity as a grad student at MIT to build a robot that had 150 sensors, 23 actuators, and over 15 microprocessors. It was amazing. It also didn't do much other than a cool demo, and I wanted more. I wanted robots to reproduce. Well, that's kind of a weird idea. What, 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 am I, what was I on about? I, was, I remember saying this and thinking this, and people would scratch their head. Well, I wanted to make robots that were so compelling in the value that they created relative to their cost that people would be compelled to build more. So kind of a, a natural drive toward robot reproduction. One of my ideas. And I was tired of waiting for that robot revolution that was supposed to be the next great thing. You see, I was convinced that in academia and in corporate research labs of large consumer electronic companies, it just wasn't going to happen. We needed to build a robot company that only did robots, that would either succeed or it would fail based on whether or not we could sell robots. And um, so that's what we did. We said, let's build a practical robot company that makes a difference in people's lives by building stuff with more value than it costs. Seems simple, but at the time, and even today, 90% of the robot endeavors don't meet these criteria. So our mission, I think you've already heard it, but you can see where it came from in those founding ideas. Build cool stuff. Let's face it, we're robot geeks. We love robots. Robots are cool, but not enough. We have to go past cool to great product that exceeds customer expectations. We gotta have fun because in the robot industry you fail more than you succeed. Uh, it took us 12 years of stuff before the Roomba actually made it out the door to, to shelves of, of retailers around the world. And of course changed the world because you're going through a lot of pain. We're going through a mission. We want to make practical robots, create an industry, and make that future that many of us have dreamed about back in the um, uh, right-hand uh, side of, of, of this hall, you'll see this robot. This is Sea Glider. This is an amazingly cool robot that can travel on one battery charge halfway around the world over, over the course of, of six to nine months without recharging, sending data back. So it's this, a robot that can explore deep ocean over long durations and send that information back. Why is this cool? Why did we take the initiative? Because there was a disaster, a horrible, horrible disaster in the Gulf. Millions of gallons of crude oil spilling out uncontrolled from the ocean floor. And there was this theory that all the oil wasn't making it to the surface, that there were these plumes of oil underwater. And the guys from BP were saying, no, 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 that, that's, that's not the case. Well, we had a robot and we, <coughs> that had a sensor suite. And there was a paper that said the sensor suite on this robot could be used to detect with good confidence the presence of plumes underwater. So we didn't wait for a contract. Our employees took the robot, put it in a truck, drove it down, put it in the water, and started collecting data. We had a, an agreement, we, we made it a deal with the University of Washington where we shipped them the data free of charge, posted on the website. We did the same thing with Rutgers. Anyone who asked for the data, we just put it up there and said, here you go. And guess what? We discovered those plumes of oil. We helped identify where they were, and we continue to work to try to make sure that uh, there is 
a real-time ability to figure out where this ecological time bomb is so that as it surfaces, we can be there to collect the oil when it gets to the surface and can be collected. We took the initiative. There's an uh, individual here, if you uh, have a chance to talk to him, please do. His name is Tom Frost. Tom, raise your hand. This man right here, when we say I robot, in this case, I mean him, really uh, went above and beyond. We sent, in 2002, soldiers over to Afghanistan because there was a terrible crisis going on. Our soldiers were being forced to go and figure out how to identify the contents of thousands of caves on the, on the cliffs in Afghanistan. They were, would actually tie ropes to people in case they had to pull them out if they became injured. And we heard about this. And we had a DARPA program to make robots that could go into situations like this and send back information. And so we said, look, we can help. Let us go over. We were able to find a support partner within the military, the Rapid Equipping Force. We volunteered Tom to go over and, and uh, get trained up at uh, basic training, and, and uh, maybe he volunteered, but uh, we appreciate that, Tom. And uh, <coughs> brought the robot to Bagram Air Force Base. There's his buddy. What's this guy there, Tom? Uh, Sergeant Petrie and Major Metler. Sergeant Petrie and Major Metler. And uh, brought the robot, sent it in, and found bad stuff. Here's the, uh, a quick video that the, the uh, military made um, talking about this. Uh, you might not be able to hear the video, but here's uh, Colonel Getty, who was our sponsor here, talking about the fact that, you know, in the old days, he tied ropes. But um, here in Afghanistan, the problems of sending people in, the need for some new technology. Here's one of the guys that actually had to go in saying how much fun he uh, doesn't have when he's, when he's in these caves. And, uh, we were able to rapidly take that DARPA program, transition it into something fieldable, and make a difference. And ultimately, the payoff for this are postcards like this one at the top. Thanks for all your support. You have saved lives today. We're not sure how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Most EOD technicians that we have talked to get a little teary and say, were it not for you, I would be dead. That's powerful stuff. There's a better way to do these missions. We stood up, we did this, some of it on our own nickel, and turned this robot into that, and in the course of doing so, saved our soldiers' lives. Um, Another quick example, <coughs> we make the future. Uh, everyone knows who this guy is, right? Rosie the robot from the Jetsons, famous in 1962. Guess what happened after the cartoon convinced everyone that robots were the future? Nothing. <laughs> For 40 years, this is the best we could do. Fake Hollywood robots. Well, again, why did iRobot come into existence? It was to address this unacceptable situation. We want Rosie, go build Rosie. Not gonna happen in academia. Someone's gotta go out and do it. So we had worked with S.C. E. Johnson for three and a half years learning how to clean. We had worked with Hasbro for three years learning how to manufacture highly complex electromechanical cool things. Plus, we knew a lot about robots, a thing or two, and, and so we built some prototypes. They worked pretty well. They would build some more prototypes. They worked better. We actually launched, in September of 2002, the world's most successful practical robot ever, the Roomba. It's generation one, generation two, generation three, generation four, generation five. And we have sold over five million robots to date. And I think Few would argue that Roomba has changed the world's perception of what a robot can be and help usher in what really is a new era. Here's a video. Uh, some of you may recognize it. 
Terminator 2. What's he doing? Walking through a wall. Okay, pretty wild stuff. Well, it's cool. Maybe it could be useful. Maybe there's places robots might want to go where if you can walk through a wall like the Terminator, um, you could do some interesting stuff. Why don't we build it? Guess what? Back there is a prototype of a shape-shifting, amorphous, squishable blob that can roll itself and do many of the things that you just saw in that video. So that might seem a little esoteric, but it actually has applications, near-term applications in manipulation. If I can make a, a, an amorphous blob that I can put over an object and then have solidify, I can pick it up. And one amorphous blob with one actuator to make it hard or soft is a heck of a lot cheaper, more robust, less costly, and, and more reliable than trying to build a robot hand by several orders of magnitude. So this cool idea is leading somewhere really important. We also work on navigation. We have indoor navigation, outdoor navigation. Robots, there's a robot back there that you put into a building and it'll build an entire map of that building automatically. But of course, the best technology that we build is stuff that simplifies these technological marvels and makes them practical so folks that don't work at iRobot can understand and take advantage of all the benefits of robotics. So this guy, Roomba, is a technological powerhouse. It has navigation, a navigation system in it which not only ensures complete coverage but also deals with going under obstacles, deals with what happens if you run over fringe? How do you get into corners? We, have, we had to invent a new way of cleaning. So a battery-powered cleaning machine could run for over an hour on small rechargeable batteries and still live your floor barefoot clean for hardwood, which is really hard. All that's fine grit and work in a very thorough fashion on carpets. Why is that important? Well, we're building practical robots. At the end of the day, who cares how neat the robot is? Who cares how many features it has? Either your rug is clean or it's dirty. If it's dirty, you did a cool demo. If it's clean, you have a product. This matters and this is something that we take to heart. Don't get stuck on furniture. Reliably return to your charger. After all, the robot's supposed to turn on every single day. Back on your floor, make it back to the recharging base and recharge. If it only works 60% of the time, you're not going to use it. You have to believe that 98% of the time the robot's turned on, it's going to make it back. Desired, exclude areas. It's got to be easy. You can't have to program it. We made a virtual wall. You just put it on the ground and it works. And of course, probably the most important feature, it has one button to turn on. Put it on the ground, hit clean, you're done. So the Roomba, I think they entitled this event Engineering Awesome. I think the Roomba is a fantastic example of engineering awesome. Tremendous complexity, simplified down to one button to make robotics accessible so that more than 20% of people thinking about a, a, a new vacuum cleaner today, I think it's more than 25%, are considering built, getting a robot instead of an upright vacuum cleaner. That's, that's amazing. So who is iRobot? I will tell you, I believe we are defined by our accomplishments, and our accomplishments are proudly shown throughout this room. This company has made a difference. A bunch of geeks and dreamers who had this notion that the demo wasn't enough. That to change the world, we had to actually solve problems with cool technology uh, that have made us the success. And I like to say, the robot industry is just getting started. We have achieved just about 0% of what we will see in the future. Thank you very much.